Let's start. Should we start? Okay. Yes. yes. Fine. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the International Faculty Development Program on Blended Learning, a novel approach to education. Organized by the IQAC and that committee, the Rugapur Women's College, in collaboration with the IQAC Khandra College. We have the honor and privilege to have with us the eminent dignitaries, Dr. Shudipta Roy, our resource person, Dr. Mohananda Kanjilal, chairperson, patron, and principal, Durgapur Women's College, and Dr. Pinaki Ranjan Bhattacharya, principal, Khandra College, the moderator of the interactive session, and Dr. Dulal Chandra Shain, coordinator, IQAC, Durgapur Women's College. Welcome everyone on board. Dr. Shudipta Roy earned her PhD from Indira Gandhi Institute of Development Research, Mumbai. After brief stints at Industrial Development Bank of India and the National Stock Exchange of India Limited, she returned to the classroom to get a formal training in finance and earn an MBA. She taught at Kankakee Community College, Illinois, for 10 years before joining the University of St. Francis, Illinois in August 2015. At the University of St. Francis, Dr. Roy teaches undergraduate BBA courses in finance, economics, and statistics, and graduate MBA courses in economics and finance. She also teaches at USF's partner institutions in the Czech Republic and Vietnam. Dr. Roy's doctoral thesis was in empirical labor economics. She also did research in empirical macroeconomics and empirical finance. Since joining USF, she has integrated her teaching with her research and has published in journals as varied as teaching statistics, higher learning research communications, operations management education view, and education economics. A fun fact about her publications, her article in teaching statistics was translated and published in German. Dr. Pinaki Ranjan Bhattacharya, Principal Khandra College. Dr. Bhattacharya has 22 years of experience as an academician, mentor, and researcher in different institutes across the country. Prior to joining academics in 2001, he has served 10 years in various industries of repute in Kata and Mumbai in the areas of financial services and information technology. He is presently associated with Khandra College as principal. Before this assignment, he was associated with Calcutta Business School as professor, marketing and entrepreneurship since 2013. Prior to joining CBS, he was Dean Academics with Doon Business School, Dehradun, faculty member IBS Dehradun and Kolkata under the IKFA University Dehradun, Siliguri Institute of Technology and other institutes of repute. He has published and presented several research papers, case study in reputed national and international journals, and conferences. He has conducted a number of MDPs and FDPs. His research interests include emerging concepts in consumer behavior, ethical issues in services marketing practices, customer value chain involvement, perceptual branding and green marketing, innovation and entrepreneurship, he is also impaneled as visiting faculty with MSME, Government of India under ESDP scheme, as a supervisor, joint supervisor for the PhD program in management with Calcutta University, the IKFA University Jharkhand, AIMA, AMU, Macout to name a few. He has successfully guided students for PhD. He is an impaneled reviewer in international journals Sage, and is member editorial board, MERC Global's International Journal of Management. Dr. Bhattacharya was a member of Board of Studies, Center of Management and Economic Studies, UPES, Dehradun. He was appointed by Gujarat Technical University as an external examiner for evaluating the thesis and a panel member for the final Viva Voshe examination of PhD scholars. Currently, he's also in charge of the entrepreneurship cell and is a member of the Global Advisory Committee of WF Global, popularly known as NEN. He's a recipient of the Silver Global Jury Award 2020 from Wadwani Foundation for evaluating student proposals worldwide and guiding future entrepreneurs globally. I would now request Dr. Bhattacharya to share a few words 
Over to you, sir. Uh, good evening, Runa Madam. Good evening, Dr. Roy. Good evening, Mohananda Madam. And all the dignitaries and participants of this, to this program. Well, uh, whatever has been said about me is uh, probably a little bit because we have got a very good relationship. Otherwise, but on the whole, yes, of course, my key areas are those what you have, what you have heard about. And today's webinar or international FDP is on blended learning, which I'll come across a little bit later. Uh, I am thankful to the Women's College and particularly to Dr. Kanjilal, one of the madam, for uh, asking me to be a member of this particular erudite meeting, I should, I should say. And I'll be trying to develop or do something good for this webinar in the, in the time to come. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir. Dr. Mohananda Kanjilal, Principal, Durgapur Women's College. Dr. Kanjilal has been the Educational and Cultural Ambassador of India in Germany in 2010. She has been the Economic and Political Analyst in several national and regional television channels. She has also been an MOOC Coordinator of the UTC Forum. Course. Dr. Kanjilal takes a keen interest in research and has published in various scholarly journals and has undertaken significant research projects. Recently, she has joined Bulgapur Women's College as the principal and we sincerely look forward to her leadership and guidance. I would now like our principal, Madam, to chair the session. Over to you, Madam. A very good evening to our honorable speaker, Dr. Shudipta Roy, professor of University of Illinois, USA, Dr. Pinaki Bhattacharya, principal, Andhra College, and also the collaborator of this webinar, and all esteemed listeners, guests, professors of this webinar, I welcome you all in this international webinar where we are honored to have with us Dr. Shudipta Roy as speaker. Now, blended learning or hybrid learning, also known as technology-mediated in instruction, wave-enhanced instruction or mixed-mode instruction, is an approach to education that combines online education materials and uh, for interaction online with physical place-based uh, classroom methods. Now, uh, this blended learning emerged as an alternative method of teaching in the 1960s, but became a method of teaching or applicable method of teaching in 1990s. Now, uh, we know about PLATO, Programmed Logic for Automatic Teaching Operations, a system developed by University of Illinois and Control Data in 1990. Another one is CD-ROMs, emerged as a dominant form of uh, uh, providing a technology-based learning. And some other models which are very much common nowadays, that is face-to-face -face driver, rotation, flex, labs, self-blend, online driver, so many other modes of online or a blended method of learning are available all over the world, right? One thing is uh, very much important, that is this blended mode of learning has become relevant, especially uh, in 90, uh, 90, uh, 2020, when uh, we the, all over the world, we faced the COVID situation. And uh, throughout the world, the teachers were uh, actually bound to, uh, bound to get an alternative method of teaching because offline mode of teaching was impossible uh, and not allowed at that particular point of time. So the teachers, professors throughout the world searched for an alternative method and uh, from that time onwards, the blended learning became popular. But 
when uh, the world has actually uh, came over from this uh, pandemic situation in uh, the online method of teaching or blended learning has become an alternative method of learning teaching everything and it has many scopes so the world thinking about this new method of learning teaching which is of course blended learning and many researches are also going on that how we can incorporate the face to face teaching method that is chalk and dust with chalk, chalk and dust the teaching uh, with the students physical teaching how we can blend the online teaching also in this current situation in this world so now we will eagerly uh, we are actually eagerly waiting uh, to listen about the disadvantage advantage and everything about this blended learning from dr pradeep kagar so i would i would like to request dr roy to uh, give us uh, enlighten us about this blended learning over to you shubhik thank you <clears throat> thank you very much mohananda so for those of you in the audience who may not know this mohananda and i your principal dr mohananda kanjilal and i have known each other for over 30 years now so it is a great honor for me to be able to share my experience my thoughts my perspective on blended learning i was looking at the messages that were coming while uh, we were going through the introductions um when the when this link expires hopefully i can see what the other link is or it will be emailed to me and then give me a few minutes to transition from this to the other one so um, so that we don't lose too much time let's go ahead and get started so today's topic is blended learning as mohananda said blended learning as a mode of instruction has been experimented with since the 1990s so in that sense it is not a new method but it has become more popular since covid today for the session i speak from the perspective of someone who was educated mostly in india so my experience as a student was mostly in traditional or face to face learning when i did my mba here i took most classes face to face so as a student i did not have much experience in online learning when i first started teaching online used to be described very differently from the way online is described now and that's where the role of blended learning comes in so i first started experimenting with content creation in multimedia format by which what i mean is recording my own videos i started that early on in my career in response to students voicing their concerns about how difficult it is to do homework on their own so i'll share a little bit of my experience there and then having used blended learning for many years now more than 10 years i am at a point in my career where i believe blended learning is helpful for the types of courses that you and i teach economics statistics finance which students consider difficult to begin with so i speak from that perspective someone who has who as a student did not experience online learning but has seen this side of the story as an educator so my plan today is to talk a little bit about what blended learning is share my experience in blended learning then share some steps in implementation for those of you who may be interested in adopting this or trying it out and then since the proof of the pudding is always in the eating a little bit on does blended learning really work what does research suggest so let's start with what blended learning is so we are elaborating on what mohananda already spoke about so blended learning is defined or described as a style of education in which students learn via electronic and online media as well as traditional face to face teaching okay so it is not saying you either do face to face teaching or do blended learning blended learning in fact tries to combine the best of both worlds the in person learning and the online learning and that's the part that we will elaborate on in a little bit Wikipedia describes blended learning in pretty much the same way an approach to education that combines online with offline and the key word the additional word they mention here 
is the interaction online. So this is the key component, that you are increasing the avenues for interaction. So since interaction is the key thing, let us quickly look at things that you may already know as educators. When we talk about interactions in learning, there are three kinds of interactions we are looking at. There is the students interacting with the faculty. So your students interacting with you, my students interacting with me. So that's an interaction that happens. Then there is student, to, uh, student content interaction, the student interacting with the course material, whether it is reading the textbook, whether it is completing assignments or taking quizzes, exams, any other exercises that you have them do, students are interacting with the content when they're doing that. And then there is student to student, the peer interaction that students have. In a typical face, typical or traditional face-to-face -face environment, a lot of this interaction happens in the classroom. And then outside the classroom, when students are doing their homework, then there is the student content interaction. But the student faculty, student, student, that typically happens in the classroom. And we'll talk about the limited amount of student content interaction that happens. So the premise, the fundamental premise of blended learning is that these interactions can and should continue beyond the in-class sessions that it really can be a 24-7 uh, interaction platform. So blended learning provides that avenue. That's what blended learning is about. So uh, since blended learning combines the best or tries to combine the best of both worlds, let's go ahead and quickly, very quickly review the uh, traditional formats. Traditional on-campus format uh, has a fixed schedule of class sessions. For example, all the classes that I teach at the University of St. Francis, um, my classes, my undergraduate classes, meet three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for 50-minute class sessions. So that's the fixed schedule. In class, learning is always instructor-led. So I'm the one that has developed a lesson plan. I'm the one that decides how much of lecturing I'll do, followed by working out problems and then assign them some problems to work on. That's when it becomes a little bit self-paced. But then I'm also watching class time. So at some point it is, let's share the answers. So that's when I ask students to either come up to the whiteboard and do the problem or I myself work out the problem. So it is very instructor-led. I am determining the pace of the class. Versus in the traditional online classroom, which is referred to as asynchronous online, and my graduate classes are all asynchronous online, there is no fixed schedule. Students access course materials online on their own time. This is where the use of a learning management system comes in. So my courses are all set up in Canvas, the learning management system that we use. In that mode of learning, the learning is self-paced to some extent. It is not to the entire extent because I set dates for chapter homework, quizzes, case studies, projects, exams, any kind of things that students have to do in order to earn a grade. So while students can determine their pace to some extent, whether they'll study on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or whether they'll study on the weekend, that part is left to them. But given that most assignments are due on Sunday at midnight, that's the amount of flexibility that they have. So there's flexibility during the week. In the United States, traditional online classes and programs started mainly as a way to reach out to students who are physically far away from campus and may not be able to attend classes on campus. And a lot of our students are non-traditional students, which means they work full time, and then are also pursuing education, maybe part-time, maybe full-time. So then to make sure that we include them in our course offerings, that's how online education, the typical traditional online, which is asynchronous online, that's how that started. And then there was this, in, there was this interest in combining the best of both worlds. So blended learning combines the traditional on-campus sessions with online course materials and or assignments. So that leads us to what are the benefits and costs, if you will, since many of us here are economics instructors, so cost-benefit analysis of the two modes of traditional learning. 
So with the traditional in-person learning, because we are all physically in the classroom at the same time, and students are following our lead in doing all the classwork, so there's less distraction. And hopefully that leads to better engagement, that students are engaged in the material that you are teaching them, they're doing their own task, they're doing what you're asking them to do, and then also interacting with each other to the extent you allow peer inter interaction in the classroom. The cost or the limitation of this is once students leave the classroom, the textbook becomes their only learning resource. Right? So as I mentioned, most of my education was completed in India. So when I was a college student, then once we left the classroom, our options were read the textbook, go over your class notes, or if you can afford it, go see a private tutor. Right? So that's there's an element of inequity there, which is something, of course, blended learning can address. But that is not the main thing for my lesson today. So textbook becomes, for the most part, the only learning resource for a lot of students. If we go to the asynchronous online learning mode, then the benefits are flexibility, as we mentioned, time and place. The student could physically be studying at any time. They can be studying from anywhere. In fact, that's the appeal of online learning, that you study at any time, at any place of your choice. Students have ch some choice of learning materials that they will use because you can provide them a lot but they can pick and choose what they want to use. For example, my graduate students may or may not be watching all the videos that I provide for them. Okay, so it is their choice. The textbook, they may be reading all of it in its entirety. They may just be reading bits and pieces, thinking that they understand a lot of it because they are working adults. Many of them are already in the finance world. So they can exercise a little bit of choice there. The ability to self-pace is a big thing in asynchronous learning. But the cost, the hindrance to that is traditional online learning requires a lot of motivation and self-discipline from the student's end. Because there are those due dates that students have to abide by, if they are not self-disciplined about having their study sessions so that they can get all of that done, students can fall behind. And my experience has been that a lot of undergraduate students fall into this trap, that they think they can do it, that online classes might be easier just because they don't physically have to be there, but then they don't complete assignments and then it keeps piling and piling. And then they're so far behind that you have to recommend that they withdraw from the course, right? So students who choose online learning have to be very confident that they have the self-motivation and the discipline to follow a rigorous schedule on their own. So this is where blended learning combines the benefits of both. It gives students the structure of in-class instruction, but combines that with the availability of resources online, and resources can be the first thing that you start with. Assignments can be added later. So students have resources outside of the classroom that they can use when you are no longer there with them. Okay, so that's what blended learning is. It combines the benefit of structured class sessions with the flexibility of online learning and the different kinds of resources we can then provide them. So technology is a big part of this, especially a learning management system. A big benefit of blended learning is that it fosters equity. Okay, so I just touched upon it by talking about private tutors, which as you all know, is a big market, a big business in India. And those who cannot afford it cannot have private tutors. So a huge benefit of blended learning is that it fosters equity. It makes, resources available to all outside of the classroom, and it personalizes education to a certain degree. So in what way is it fostering equity? In what way is it helping students? So if, if we all think about the typical experience in an on-campus class session, we all know that that learning experience is not uniform. All students do not leave class every single day confident that they have understood everything. And there can be different reasons for that. Excuse me, ma'am. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, 